Hey guys, it's Morgan coming to you from Highland Cycles with another schlag. Welcome back. We are back at the shop. It's going to be a short one because it is the week of Christmas. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, so I'm taking the rest of the week off. Um, as you guys know, if you've been watching the channel, I've been working a lot on the van build, so I haven't actually filmed a bunch of mechanical stuff. So sorry about that. But let's get on with the schlag. Yeah! We got an interesting one here. There's Kenny. Um, we have a 19 six days 450 that someone else installed a recluse and it does not work correctly. It does weird things. Let me show you guys what's going on here. Oh, by the way, this is actually making him super angry. <laughs> like, today is a good day to watch the anger well up in him and then he's this might burn down. I cannot guarantee that this motorcycle will be here at the end of the day. Um, and not because we got it done. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it's weird. You grab this and squeeze it. Whoa, that got better. Oh, if I just fixed it right now, it's going to really upset him. The So. <laughs> yeah, I think I just fixed it. I think I just fixed it. Okay, hold on. Let me back, yeah. let me back up for a second. I'm okay. Anyway, what was happening was that the lever was crazy hard to pull, and it wouldn't. When we first got it, it wouldn't disengage. Um, when you pull the clutch in, the the recluse kind of worked as far as like sitting there idling in gear and go whatever, but it made some weird noises. And then it wouldn't disengage me. Put anyway, whatever it sucked. So I took it apart. It turns out that whoever installed it put too many plates back in because this just has the EXP 3.0, but not the core. Um, so they put too many plates back in. Blah blah blah. Move on. Anyway, it didn't work. So and we noticed that by the diaphragm spring was like super cupped in. So we got that back in there, but it was still now it wouldn't engage, so it wouldn't take off. And so we were fiddling with it. He had the clutch cover off, all this stuff. And then just, <laughs> just now, dude, I swear, if I fix this thing by touching it, it's gonna be hilarious. You're gonna, I might die. Just so you know, if a wrench comes flying and hits me in the head, it was Zach, and I probably deserved it. So <laughs> the, uh, I just pulled it, and now it's working. So. I think by having those extra plates in there, something happened with the piston. It must have gotten cocked or something. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to set you guys down and we're going to see if this works because I think it might. That's the problem. So, uh, well, whatever. We're going to take it apart and get back in there. But, guys, I want to uh, express a massive thank you to Mark Odette, who provided um, mail time today. So, on last week's Gospel Two Wheels, I don't know, whatever, recent Gospel Two Wheels, our live show that we do on Thursday mornings, there was mention of a disco ball for the van and boom. It showed up. So let's take this thing out. We are definitely going to mount this in the van. Um, I want Mark and everybody here to notice, to know that this will be going up in the van. I am super thankful of Mark for this because it's hilarious. And tell me that is not <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Very excited to put that in the in the uh, uh, van. I am, yeah, I'm beyond excited to have this hanging permanently in the van. So, woohoo! Uh, also, another mail time. It's not uh, whatever. It a part showed up. Let me show you guys. 
the final thing we need for my kids YZ144 is a petcock rebuild. But in thinking about that, I decided, you know what, this kid needs a big tank because he's riding with me all the time and I'm always having to pour gas into him and his brother's tank is getting, anyway, whatever. We ride long enough now, kid needs a bigger tank. Boom! That showed up. I'm really excited about it. I still need the Petcock rebuild because, so you guys know, when you order a tank from a Cherbis or anybody like that, they don't come with a Petcock, which I do find relatively annoying because you spend that kind of money on a tank, you think it would come with all that stuff, but it doesn't. Wahaha! Wait a second. It did come with a petcock. I can't believe it. It came with two petcocks. Dude. Okay. I retract that statement. Thank you, Acherbus. I'm really excited about that. So, awesome. I'm going to get this thing mounted up. And I think I might take the kids 144 for a little spin. Um, sh don't tell Thomas that I wrote it before he did. But uh, I'm going to get this mounted up. Let's go check on Zach in that clutch and see if we can find out what's going on. All right, guys, so I figured it out. I just talked to Recluse, and it took talking to them and kind of working through the problem and looking at the parts fishes again uh, to finally figure out what's going on. So let me show you something here. So this is the Recluse, blah, blah, blah. This normally sits on here. When it first came in, this Belleville washer was like concave in that way. Um, I thought originally that it had uh, too many plates in it because it had an extra steel and an extra uh, friction from what I'm used to with the EXP 3.0. Well, it turns out this is a Radius X, not the CX, but the Radius X, and it actually uses all of those plates, but it's supposed to have a special spacer that goes right in here. It's like this ring with these little tab. Anyway, it's supposed to sit right in there to then hold this all up a little bit. And that's missing. And it's not in the box of recluse parts that he brought me or the stock parts that he brought me. So super happy with that we found that. Not happy about the fact that that part is not here. And I don't know if he has them. I'm gonna call the customer right now. Hopefully he will have that. And we can get this thing back together because we did a whole bunch of other work to it got it all dialed in um and then we couldn't get that done so anyway uh yeah we'll go make a phone call and if i get that part in here i'll show you guys otherwise you can check it out on their uh parts fish online if you go to recluse.com you can dive in there and see anyway just it's basically a spacer to hold everything up so that this all works but anyway there we go simple simple problem um and honestly, that's why, guys, I make these videos so that you can do it yourself and not take it to some guy who has no idea what he's doing, um, who clearly didn't watch my video <laughs> and uh, botched it. So anyway, on to the next job. Right on, guys. We got the YZ all finished up, and I could not be any happier with the way it's turned out. Um, first massive thank you to roger hurd for the motorcycle he gave this to me um completely free roger i cannot say thank you enough uh thomas says thank you if you were here i'd make him say thank you on camera we'll get him on here eventually um all i did was put the tank on it and the shrouds and the number plate um today uh, i took it out for a test ride it runs awesome i've got it jetted for sea level because i'm actually planning to surprise the boys and take them to phoenix next week for uh the first of the year for a couple days of riding down there, um, test out the van and the new bike and just get the heck out of town. So, uh, right on. So this is gonna be the kind of the last of the YZ144 build videos here. So it's, let's go over what we did. Um, first of all, it's a 2002 YZ125, uh, excuse me, YZ144 build. Anyway, this is a 2002 YZ125 with an Athena big bore kit, so it's a cylinder, piston, and everything. Um, I completely disassembled the motor all the way down to the transmission, put new tranny bearings, a new hot rods crank, a brand new Athena piston, and gaskets and everything like that. 
new water pump seals, all brand new seals, crank seals, everything in the motor. So the motor's completely rebuilt. The cylinder was fine, didn't need to be uh, plated, so that worked out good. Nitro Moose, thank you very much. Jeff Douglas at Nitro Moose gave us um, brand new platinum mooses for the wheels. So it's got platinum Nitro Mooses. We've got an X30 rear tire and the venerable M59 front. Um, Brady Metter, thank you so much from TBT Racing. He went through and valved the suspension for Thomas and set it up specifically for him. And it already feels great, <laughs> just bouncing around outside through the rocks and stuff. So huge thank you, TBT. Um, big thank you to, uh, I think it was Tucker Rocky who gave me a deal on the parts for the motor and all that stuff. Um, it's got an FMF fatty pipe on it. That's what was on it from Roger. It's got a pro circuit uh, spark rusher silencer on it. Uh, running uh, pro taper bars. What do we, I think these are just KTM bars that I had laying around, so that didn't cost any money. Um, pro taper grips, lock on grips, brand new cables um, for throttle and clutch, uh, bled the brakes, levers were already on it, brand new air filter, let's see what else, oh, Nate at DDC Racing gave us the rear sprocket, uh, 50 tooth rear sprocket, thank you Nate, those sprockets are basically indestructible, the last, <laughs> the life of the bike more, <laughs> especially a 125, um, yeah, uh, we've got uh, pro circuit triple clamps on it. It's absolutely decked out, ready to rock and roll. Super stoked, guys. Um, V-Force 3 reeds. Uh, it's just got the stock Makuni carburetor on it, but we've got that jetted and dialed in. It's running really good. Um, yeah, the next time you guys see this one, it's going to be Thomas riding it, hopefully down in Arizona next week. And um, yeah, really, really, really happy with the way that turned out. Comment below if there are any questions about the build, anything like that. I'll put a card right up here for the build series. So you guys can check that thing out. Um, we are still waiting on parts for that uh, KTM. The customer does not know where that part is. That's a bummer. Um, right on. On to the next thing. <laughs> yeah! Yes! yes! <laughs> yeah! Zach Sheets, I think he got the little 150 fixed. That is awesome. There's a song playing in the background. You I can't quite hear, but trust me, it's awesome. Yes, Zach Shades! That's uh, one win for the day. <laughs> we'll take it. We will take it. Hey, guys. So, it's actually late night. It's after Christmas. The boys and I, Thomas, say hi. <laughs> Down here, change the tire on the kid's bike. And uh, we are going to hopefully go ride tomorrow, um, either Rap Valley or Delta or something like that. Um, but we're really prepping because we're heading to Phoenix on Thursday. And you guys should definitely subscribe to the channel and check that out. We're going to do a whole video series on our trip to <laughs> down to Phoenix. It's going to be super, super fun. We're going to ride Canyon Motocross Track, and then we're going to ride out in the desert near Mile Markers, kind of towards Wickenburg. Um, so that's going to be awesome. I know this schlag was super short. Um, I hope that you liked it still. I know it wasn't crazy informative. Um, but anyway, we had a good time. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you guys get out, you spread the gospel of two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on and get out and ride your dirt bikes! See the sick dance skills when I'm the lingo. Dancing.